So today we are going to be talking about Clara and the Sun, which is perfect because I have not seen the sun for a bit as we do have a tropical storm that is passing on by in Florida, but yeah, excited to be talking about this one. Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So this book is the book on the long list that I definitely knew the most about prior to the long list being announced. And it was a book that I likely would have ended up picking up anyway. Kazuo Ishiguro is an author that I've obviously heard a lot about and he's one of those authors that you know when you just like have a feeling that you're gonna like an author maybe based off of like the synopses of several books that they've published or something like that like you just hear little snippets and you're like mm, they seem to be writing around what I like a lot and so I feel like when I finally do start reading that author I'll really like them. Ishiguro was one of those authors for me and I think that he still is but for me Clara and the Sun I don't know I'm I'm split on how I feel about it let me try to explain so first of all let's start synopsis uh, Clara and the Sun is about an artificial friend or uh, like a little robot that has AI artificial intelligence and her name is Clara. The story starts with her being in a store being sold and then continues to her being the artificial friend to a, a young girl named Josie who has some type of illness. And so this whole point of like an artificial friend is to give these children to give children somebody to talk to somebody to be there for them somebody to listen and uh, keep them from not being lonely i guess and for clara this is obviously very important but also in addition to that she wants to make sure that josie stays healthy because josie is sick and and she does need a little bit of extra help i also want to talk a little bit about the origins of this story because um, I watched this video, an interview with Kazuo Ishiguro, which will be linked in the description if you want to check it out yourself. Um, and he was talking about how he was, he originally wrote Clara and the Sun to be a children's book. And then upon his daughter reading it, she was like, no, this can't be for kids. And so he ended up adapting it into an adult novel, the novel that it is now. And I'm not quite sure how different the two were originally, but hearing that kind of explained a lot for me because especially for like the first half or for the first like hundred or so pages, it does almost have a weird feeling of being for children, even though it definitely isn't. Or I don't know if it's the imagery or the way things that are described, it's you could almost see this book being illustrated in your mind, which I think is a pretty good thing. Like I, I would, I like seeing that. I, I like feeling like I could see this book, but it's also in a very illustrated sense. Like I didn't feel like I was seeing these people. I saw, I felt like I was seeing an illustrated version of these people, which does feel slightly childlike. And I thought that originally it was just because this does largely center around children because these artificial friends are made for children but i i think now knowing that that's where this book started it, it makes even more sense to me so i have three things that i really wanted to talk about today um the first and the third are kind of the same but i'm splitting them up just because i i'm gonna have like a spoiler free section of this and then i am gonna dive into spoilers uh, later, like halfway through the part two that I'm gonna be talking about. Is this getting too confusing? You know what, if you don't want spoilers, I'm going to say before I get into spoilers that it's about to happen. So you'll be able to click off uh, and I'll start this review spoiler free. That's basically all you need to know. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is uh, Clara in general, like who she is as an artificial friend because obviously she is somebody that has been built to be what she is and she is given this this artificial intelligence to be able to figure people out and she slowly learns like the the artificial friends that are in this store they don't automatically know how to react around people or they, they don't like 
automatically know all the ins and outs and like the eccentricities of people of what it means to be like human but they are programmed to watch to observe and to slowly understand all of these things to be able to put these together and in particular to get to know certain people the people that they're around just like a human would where if you're around somebody for longer you get to know their mannerisms more you get to know their the way that they speak the way that they think uh, more than others so uh, clara in particular is very observant so the owner of the store or the person that's in charge of the layout of the store where the artificial friends go and everything she often says that clara is very observant she is is more observant than others and this is something that's talked about quite a bit throughout the book especially the first part as we're getting to know clara so we know that she has like this extra ability and i think that that's in itself is very interesting because obviously all of these like robots all of these artificial friends are created but clara has something that's uniquely clara about her and that comes with her observational skills and it's funny to think that like there could be something particular about this one manufactured robot that is different from all the others and i think that, that plays into a little bit of what we see later in the book but i'm gonna stop there because once again I don't want to give spoilers in this section. So let's move on to the second part that I want to talk about, which is religion, which might seem weird. I <laughs> I felt like this book very strongly was it had this like religious theme about it. And when I was watching through reviews that others had done on this, I watched the review over on a uh, Zim Reads channel, which go watch it if you haven't. And he mentioned the same thing and I was like okay I'm not crazy but Clara puts like a lot of identity into the sun the sun is its own being to Clara and she is solar powered so she does she performs better if she has sun and she feels more awake and everything so she she prefers to be in the sun which makes sense for her and her programming but she also seems to think that the sun can do these magical things for people that it can almost like perform miracles for people she believes that she sees somebody that is dead on the road as she is looking out of her store window and that the sun revives him and there's another instance where these two people come together and it's, it almost seems like they are reconnecting for the first time in a long time. And she sees that as something that the sun brought together. So she's putting a lot, a lot of this onto the sun and it's very reminiscent of religion, of like seeing in these moments is some greater power at play like being able to to watch something happen and seeing it as like all a part of god's plan along those lines and the reason why i think it's particularly interesting is because obviously like a religion like the oldest religions are often derived from nature and the idea of like gods that govern different natural resources like there could be a god um, or like the roman or greek gods like they would have a specific part to play within nature and because nature was so hugely important like with humanity as we are right now we don't have to worry quite as much about nature as you know in prehistoric times where it, anything that happens with nature could completely change everything about the the way your day looks the way your month looks the way your year looks you, you have to adapt to it and you want the nature to be kind to you but at this stage it's not as big of a deal if it doesn't rain for a certain period of time in every place because we can ship things around we've adapted to a lot of these struggles that would have been much larger a while back not to say that nature can't still <laughs> 
<laughs> affect our lives a lot. Of course it can. Um, it, I mean, we're seeing that literally all the time, but it's not on the day to day level that it used to be where, you know, you have your own farm. This is where you grow your food and you need like rain to happen regularly enough to keep your crops so that you have enough to eat so that you can provide for your family, you know, that sort of thing. And so from those times, there gets to be a lot of uh, gods or a, a lot of religious figures that are specifically in charge of the rain, of the sun, of all of these elements that are playing such a large part in your day. Whereas later we see more gods that are specific to morality, where that becomes a harder and harder thing to control as communities of people grow and grow. There's a great episode of a podcast that I will also link down below that goes more into detail about this and like the evolution of religion, which I find endlessly fascinating. But it feels like Clara, who is this, uh, who's from artificial intelligence, she needs the sun and she feels that others need the sun as well. And she starts seeing in these occurrences that the sun has this like greater plan that you can ask the sun for things. So Clara wants to ask the sun for help with Josie. And that's exactly like what she wants to do in the book. Now I am going to start getting into spoilers from this point on in the video, it's spoiler time. Okay, so here's your chance to click away. Or if you wanna skip right to whether or not I recommend the book, you can also skip to that. There'll be a timestamp for it and I won't talk about spoilers anymore in that portion, but just this is your moment to either skip to that or leave the video. Okay, cool. Okay, so <laughs> spoilers. Uh, Clara does end up asking the son for help with Josie. She promises the son that she is going to destroy pollution if the son it would, in the hopes that the son would cure Josie's illness. And she ends up like taking down this, um, this big machine that is polluting and uh, she has to sacrifice a bit of herself to do it. And she convinces others even into helping her. And at first she's not saying anything at all about you know what her plan is and it's and the fact that she thinks that this plan came from the sun itself like the sun told her of this plan or she got this idea by talking to the sun and as it goes on she does have to kind of fill in more of the details but the other people in the story also care so much about Josie that they are willing to do anything at this point they are at such a state where any possible answer could be the answer and they don't want to leave like any stone unturned. If this is something that even has a 1% chance of helping Josie, they'll do it. And so even though it seems absolutely crazy that Clara would want to take down this giant polluting machine, uh, and I can't even remember what kind of machine it is, but it, it just, it causes pollution while it's doing whatever the thing is it's supposed to be doing. Um, and she convinces somebody into helping her destroy it because he sees that as like the only option for, or the only hope for keeping Josie healthy and alive in the world. And he wants that more than anything. So he's at this low point where he's desperate and he is accepting of this idea that Clara has, an artificial friend has, and is willing to go for it, which I think also ties into the religious aspect. You often find that in times of um, trouble or hopelessness, people will look for hope anywhere. And oftentimes that can be found in religion, that it gives you something to do, it gives you some sense of control, someone to pray to, someone to hope to. And I think that that's what the sun is to Clara and also <laughs> even more so is to the other characters that don't actually know really that it's the sun that they are hoping does something, but they're, they just see the task at hand and think that, okay, if this could possibly help Josie, I have to do it. And in the end, uh, after Clara goes through this, destroys this polluting machine, sacrifices a bit of herself to do it without knowing exactly how much it's going to harm her, 
um, she she's able to destroy this machine and uh, I think it's like the next day or the day after Josie does become better she is at like the lowest of the low health wise and they're thinking that like any day could be her last and the sun comes out one day uh, Clara is convincing the family to keep the blinds open to keep the curtains open so that the sun can fully reach Josie and she starts to feel better and in fact from that moment on she's better and so then you, it, and it's crazy like the journey that you take in this book because at the beginning when you're starting to like hear Clara talk about these things you're like okay but then the more she talks about it because you're in her brain um, or <laughs> brain for a lack of a better term uh, and you're you're hearing her thoughts and you almost start to think like well maybe it could do something this is a book after all like anything is possible and so you start to get like a little bit hopeful as well it rubs off on you a little bit and then it actually works and then you have to like do this moment of looking all the way back in the book and thinking like was she right about those moments before was it really the sun is it really the sun it leaves you as the reader questioning in this world is the sun actually cognizant of what it's doing and is that really the intention behind it is is the sun the god of this religion that clara seems to be following without ever referring to it as as being a religion so for me that was by far the most interesting facet of the story but there is a third part that i want to talk about which kind of refers back to part one which is this idea i guess of something about someone making them unique so in part one i talked about clara and how despite the fact that she is a manufactured robot uh, she does have something that is particular to her and that separates her from the other robots that you can buy but then we also have this question about humans is there something inside every human that makes them special that makes them unique and uh, specifically we talk a lot about this with Josie because we come to find out this is another one of the big spoilers we come to find out that Josie's mom, or really both of her parents, but they, they're separated, and the mom more so is, is pushing for this, but they are trying to, uh, trying out this new technology, I guess, which is when somebody creates an artificial friend, but really just the shell of the artificial friend without the AI, and they create them to they create the robot to resemble a human a, a specific person and so in this case they want an artificial friend or the shell of one to resemble Josie and I think that uh, the artificial friend proportions are actually they're shorter than like regular people so I'd assume that this robot version is not quite like an artificial friend looking thing it's it's trying to look more human than what they look um but trying to get one that looks like Josie in the hopes that they'll be able to put the brain or the AI of uh, Clara into that shell if Josie were to pass away and Clara would do her best to recreate who Josie is and we know from the reactions of people looking at this this shell, uh, specifically the mom and the dad, that the the shell doesn't really look like it looks like Josie, but it probably falls into that like uncanny valley area where it looks enough like Josie for you to know who it's supposed to be, but because there's something not right about it 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 feels almost creepy and scary in a way i think that that says something in itself where you know this this thing can be modeled to look like josie but it's missing something even visually and then there's the thought of well if we were to get clara who's a very observant uh, artificial friend 
to be Josie and to live in this new shell and act as Josie, then is is that really going to fool anyone? Are the parents going to really feel like that is their daughter and not, you know, actual Josie who at that point would have passed away? And or is there something inherently Josie in who Josie is that can never be captured, can never be observed and recreated by anything else? And so there would always be something not quite right about the new Josie, about this artificial Josie, about Clara in Josie's body. And while I don't think we really answer that question in the book, it's more just brought up as something for you to think about as the reader. It definitely is an interesting question and one that I was thinking about not too long ago after reading The Employees by Olga Raven, which was on the long list, and I think short list actually, for the International Booker Prize 2021, which just happened. I have a full review up about that if you wanna watch it. And it, it dives into the same questions, but in a very different way, whereas Claire and the Sun is a lot more story-based than the employees is. And do I think it does a good job of raising this question? Yes. But I think that it does it in a, in a much easier way and in a much more um, hand-fed, hand-held way <laughs> than uh, maybe some other books have done in the past. So that kind of brings me into, would I recommend this book or not? Would, would the frog and I recommend this book or not? And I, after thinking about this for a really long time, I finished this book quite a while ago and I haven't made this review yet because I couldn't decide the answer to this question. But I think that I can officially give it one good ribbit. <laughs> um, so, which of course means that yes, I do in fact recommend this book. Now, the reason why I was so on the fence about this book is I, I don't love this book <laughs> and I would say that I barely like this book. It's it's good enough. It's it's decent in the the way that the story is told and I the questions that it proposes I think are interesting questions that I do like reading about, but the way that they were proposed were was in a way that uh, it almost felt too easy on me as a reader, too obvious. And I just wasn't really feeling it as far as that aspect goes, as far as the story elements goes. And I don't, I didn't really feel as though the characters were developed to a level where I didn't mind about the story, not feeling full and flushed out to me. So you know, I feel like you have to really strongly have one or the other, especially in a book that's been nominated for Booker. And I, I felt like both of them were lacking in something, but it just felt as though it was, it was like almost there, but lacking. Like every character and every character's development felt like it was almost there, but just a little bit lacking. I think Clara to me was the, the most well thought out and well written character which makes sense because it's told from first person from Clara's perspective and I am very happy that she was the most clear to me as the reader and I would because I'm most interested in her of course she's what makes this story unique but I just don't think that there was enough so the real reason why I would say that I recommend this book is actually the atmosphere it creates. I enjoyed just being in this book. I enjoyed the process of, of yeah, just existing in this world. I like that it doesn't fully explain to you all of the pieces of uh, like all the sci-fi elements because it's a very light sci-fi book. It never, you know, is is like this is exactly the types of achievements that have been made for humans up to this point. Like this is where technology lies at this point. You just kind of exist in this world and you learn and figure out what these 
what technology you need to be able to understand in order to understand the story. And I really appreciate that. I much prefer stories being told that way than ones that explain the entire thing, unless it's heavy sci-fi, in which case, please explain everything because that's it's hard to get a grasp of otherwise. So I'm glad that Ishiguro told it in that way. But even besides that, just the atmosphere of the story in general, like I said at the beginning, it feels like I'm picturing it in an illustrative sense instead of picturing like humans going about this I feel like I'm picturing illustrated scenes and I think that that's a really neat thing and is very unique to this book for me because I can't think of another book that I've read that's done that for me so with that I would say that I do recommend this book um, but I do also want to give recommendations for other books that I think touched on the two big themes in this uh, a little bit better for me. So the first one I already mentioned in part three, um, but since that was a spoiler section, I'll mention it again. That is The Employees by Olga Ravin. So if you're interested in this question of humans, um, you know, is there something unique about a human that makes them human? Or is there something unique about uh, can there be something unique about a robot that would make them that specific robot or that specific humanoid then I think that the this book is it's an interesting portrayal of that. I have a full review on this book up on my channel if you'd like to see it but I this book has made me think it's so much. <laughs> I've thought so much about different things to do with this because of this book and I like comparatively Claire and the Sun just didn't hit that for me. I, I think coming off of this book and then reading Claire and the Sun not that far after reading this book, it was just such a huge difference, especially this book is so short and it makes you question all of these things surrounding this like human versus humanoid or versus AI question at that it, it was just really good. And then uh, instead, if that's not the part of the book that interests you, but is instead this idea of like religion being represented in a very unique way in a book, then I would say go for Life of Pi by Yann Martel. Uh, this, I've talked about this book a lot. Um, this is one of my favorite books. It's uh, probably the first book that I ever thought critically about and like about the imagery, about the themes and all, all that. So I owe a lot, I feel, to this book. Um, and also it won the Booker Prize in 2002, which is really cool. Uh, and something that I didn't know until after I started like doing videos for Booker in 2020. So just neat that one of my favorite books would have been like the winner for that award and I had no idea. I will say that synopsis wise I just recently found out that this is um, very similar to another book uh, called Max and the Cats which also winds up being um, I think a boy in a boat with a tiger as well and it, they come from a much larger boat that has a bunch of zoo animals but as far as I know, it doesn't touch on the same themes at all as Life of Pi. Like they're very different in that way. I don't know that for sure. I am planning on reading Max and the Cats just so that I can have that comparison for myself. But I do want to say that because that's something that I just learned and I'm still not sure how I feel about like that, how closely they relate to each other. Uh, I'm looking forward to figuring out how I feel about it though once I read the other book and I'm sure I'll end up doing a video comparing the two at some point. But uh, yeah, basically this is about Pai Patel who is, whose dad owns a zoo and they are moving and they, they're taking a bunch of these zoo animals on this big boat. He winds up in a boat with a tiger but there's a lot of religious themes throughout this and it actually talks about like three different religions. Pi's really fascinated with religion and then and that's like for a hundred pages of the book and then you get to when he's on the boat with a tiger. But I do think this poses very interesting ideas about religion and this idea of faith, this idea of belief in general. And it's it's one of my favorites to reference about about that as a topic in general. That being said, atmosphere wise, Claire and the Sun, very different in in that feel, in that tone. I'm excited to read more Ishiguro 
and I really hope that I like him just because I've assumed that I would for a while. Claire and the Sun specifically, I don't think that I would read it again. Um, I don't own it. I borrowed it from the library to read and I don't see myself purchasing this book. It's not one that I think that I would return to at any point, but I do think that it's a worthwhile read to to go through. So if this review was interesting to you, then definitely check it out. But that brings us to the end of this video, so I hope that you did enjoy it, and if you did, please do consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!